Blessings to you. Um, as you guys know, I have recently had a death. Uh, let me share a little bit about that and then I'll get into what we got to share. I, uh, I am richly, richly, richly blessed. Um, it's okay. Yeah, I'll pull it down. Uh, thank you though. I, I just pray for those of you guys that are wondering, there's a picture of my family on the wall over here and I was going to grab it, but I didn't want to disrupt it. It's hanging pretty nice. So, but yeah, we lost our sister, uh, two Thursdays ago now. And first of all, let me say thank you God for allowing us the time that we had with her, um, with the disease that she had, it's called scleroderma and sclera meaning hardening, I think, and derma, dermatologist, I guess skin organs, I don't know, skin, but the hardening of the skin. And so, hey Jessica, I wanna thank God because people with der uh, scleroderma, as my sister had, um, they're not supposed to live a very long time. And God allowed my sister to live, wow, 10 years plus with it. And um, so I would say that's four or five years longer than what the diagnosis usually allow people to live. So I am grateful despite the fact that she died two Thursdays ago. Um, and just so you guys know, my sister is the middle, is the middle sister. She's right in between. There's four older than there's her and then there's four beneath. So the nine of us has now become eight. Um, and our middle sister is gone. Uh, it broke my heart walking into the hospital room uh, and seeing her body laying there only an hour after her spirit left. Um, we landed, I wanna say at like 12, maybe 11.30 uh, in California and we were on our way and 30 minutes, just 30 minutes away from the hospital guys, she left. Um, so we didn't get to get to the room and say goodbye. but. Nonetheless, I am super grateful for everything. Um, I'm at peace, our, our entire family is at peace. Um, if you could see the pain that she was in, the suffering that was going on, thank you so much, King. Um, the suffering that was going on, the only thing better than God taking her would have been God restoring her body, not just healing her or not just giving her spirit back to us but putting her spirit back into her body and physically healing and restoring her body would have been better than God taking her. But since he chose not to do that, then the next best, best thing was for him to take her home. Um, so though it hurts and though it's painful and though I grieve her loss and she's gone, um, it doesn't hurt uh, as bad knowing that first of all, she's with our king and secondly, she's not suffering anymore. Uh, and third, I'll see her again. So um, that's what I wanted to share about that. I, I'm super thankful for what God has done in my life. But today I want to talk to you guys about um, watching film. And you guys kind of got who was watching service with me earlier. You were watching maybe the uh, worship service. You understood because I kept texting. Today I want to talk to you guys about watching film. And... Uh, Jaden Smith had jumped on. Uh, I don't think he's on anymore, but he had jumped on. And he and King and some of you guys, JR, um, whoever's watching or playing sports, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I say watch film or watch tape. Um, I want to talk to you about how to overcome your adversary, how to get through or get past um, your opponent, how to get the victory. Um, and this is very important because I had a, a young man call me yesterday and we were chatting about some things that's going on in his life and some of the things that were starting to frustrate him and get him really angry. And the Lord said, this is probably a good topic to discuss on because some of you need to understand that nobody has power over your life unless you give it to them. For example, if I start making fun of the way you look, and you allow my perspective on how you look to affect you, you just gave me power. Because the truth is how you look, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I think about how you look. 
What matters is how you feel about how you look. That's the most important thing. So if you allow how I feel about how you look to affect you, then you've just given me power. Now I can put you down and cause your day to go up or go down. I can get under your skin. I can cause you to have a good day or a bad day. You can't afford to give nobody power like that over your life. And so when you watch film or you're an athlete and you go back to your to your locker room with your coach and with your teammates and you're watching film, watching film means you're watching the other team you're preparing to go up against. You're watching the opponents that you're getting ready to go to battle with. You're studying the tactics of your enemy that you're about to go to war with. And when you watch film, you study their moves, their strategies, you see what they do. That way, when it starts to happen, it doesn't affect you because you've been prepared for it. Guys, I'm already preaching really good. I hope you guys are catching what I'm putting down. This young man called me yesterday and he allowed his peace to be disturbed. And when we started to discuss what was going on, I realized somebody else had power over a situation that caused him to feel a certain way. And I had to tell this young man that we were talking to yesterday, listen, don't give no situation or nobody power over you like that. Remember, when you watch film, you study the tactics of your enemy. And the only way that they can have power over you is if you allow what they say about you to settle in to where you start to believe it. That's not the case. God says, I have fearfully and wonderfully made you. God says, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew thee. God says, you are mine. God says, I love you just as you are. God says, come to me. So when you realize that what really matters is what God thinks, then nobody can have power over you like that no more. Stop giving power to the enemy, watching film, how to pursue this thing called life without losing your joy. Guard your heart. And I wanna read something out of John, John chapter 10. You have the ability to get power. You have the ability to get wealth. You have the ability to, to grab your peace and keep your peace. Don't let nobody get power over you. If I told Miss Nadine, you look ugly today, but in her mind, she feels she looks beautiful and it doesn't matter what anybody says, she has not given me power. But if I say you look ugly and it affects her, she's given me power over her. So watching film and studying the tactics of your enemy causes you to be prepared for the strategy strategies of the enemy. There is none. They got no power over you because you are God and God is yours. I'm not your God. No man on this earth is your God. If you lose somebody as a friend, so what? If you lose somebody as a lover, so what? If you lose a vehicle, so what? If you lose a, a building or a house, so what? If you lose a sister to death, she's gone. And I don't mean so what as if like, I mean, so what? You'll see her again. I've studied death. I've studied the tactics of death. Death comes and it takes the people that we love out of this world into the next. The next world that watch this is waiting for you and me. In essence, she's better off. She's not dealing with President Trump and Biden and Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and politics and, and, and disease and all of this garbage that we're still dealing with. She's not dealing with this anymore. She's at peace and running with Jesus. And to be honest with you, death is sort of the crossing over into glory. It's just the way that we have to pass through. But all of us are destined to pass through that gate. And we're going to do it at one day. But if you study death, even death has no power over us. Death, where is your sting? You thought you had victory because you took somebody I love. But guess what? You took somebody I love and brought her to somebody that loves her even greater. <laughs> death, where is your sting? You ain't got no power, homie. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm gonna miss her physically, but she's with me always. Thank you for the hearts, for the love. I feel like I'm preaching, all right. Um, let's read John chapter 10, verse 10, okay? It says, Verily I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. He that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, that same person is a thief and a robber. And I'm here to talk about thieves and robbers. What up, Jew? Stick with us, man. This is going to help y'all. I'm here today to point out thieves. And if you don't come in through the door, if I'm your boyfriend and you allow me to sneak through the window, I'm a thief. Thieves sneak in through the window. People that are here to take, they come in through the window. They don't come through the door. And the verse says, he that comes in not by the door to the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. And I'm telling you today, we are watching film. We're studying the ways of the thief. We're studying the ways of the robber and the thief came and took my sister and they thought that they were doing us some injustice. But really what they did was they did us a good deed by the, by the, by the power and the permission of God to take her out of this world of pain. And now she's running in glory with Jesus Christ. Verse two, but he that enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. You want to come in? and get to know me like every one of you guys have ever done. Everybody on this line come in through the door. I know you guys by name. I trust y'all. When I invite you to my house, you don't try to break through the window or through the sliding back door. You come through the front door. I, I know you. You ring my doorbell and you walk in and you shake my hand. You say, what up, Petey? And you greet me. That's not a thief. A shepherd comes in for the sheep through the front door. Verse three. To him, the porter is open. You have access and the sheep hear his voice and he calls all of his sheep by name and he leads them out and he puts forth his own sheep and he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow but they will flee from him for they don't know the stranger's voice. This, par this parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spoke unto them. Then Jesus said unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that have ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Guys, we are watching film on thieves and robbers. We're studying the ways of thieves and robbers. And when this young man called me yesterday, it broke my heart to know that the way of a thief and a robber almost got the better of him. Nobody should allow a thief and or a robber to get the better of you. Nobody should allow a thief and or a robber to pull you out of your godly character. When we were talking, God just kept talking to me about you need to share this with the young people. Watch film. Study the ways of the enemy. Know your history. Check your patterns. See the things that you do regularly. See the things that causes you to get tripped up. Because Satan sure enough is studying, studying those things. And sta Satan sure enough knows them. Watch this. Satan goes further and takes a record. He records the things that have tripped you up in the past. And he's going to use them again against you in the future. you got to watch film. Check your pattern. Satan knows them. Amen. So John chapter 10, verse 10 is critical when dealing with thieves. Jesus is, is directly telling his disciples what to watch out for with thieves. 
And some of you young people know exactly what I'm talking about because when I was your age, I did it all the time. What time are your parents gonna fall asleep? They're gonna fall asleep at 11, cool. I'ma tap on your window by 12. Tap on your window? Yeah, I'm trying to tap on your window so I can get into your window, so I can tap on them drawers, so I can get into your drawers. That's a thief. That's a thief. There's no other way to say it. If you're not a thief, you would show up to the front door and you would greet the parents and then you would follow the rules of the household. The parents might say, thank you for coming in, young Dave. Have a seat on the furniture here. You guys are welcome to stay in the living room. As soon as uh, you, you see the lights going off, please exit and go on home. You say, yes, ma'am, no problem. That's not the way of a thief. The way of a thief is gonna wait till the parents and or the shepherd is out of town and they're gonna sneak in and destroy the sheep. I was watching this video. I watched the craziest stuff on YouTube, y'all. Miss Nadine will tell you. And I was watching this video of foxes coming in trying to steal chicken. And this video was showing foxes and they came in so slick. Now I understand why they say slick or sly as a fox. And man, they snatched up chickens and ran out. But this one fox ran into the wrong coop and a pit bull was there. And the pit bull killed the fox. I mean, it was brutal, it was graphic. And that pit bull reminded me of Jesus. I said, oh my gosh. But the, the love and the passion that that pit bull showed for protecting the, the chicken, it reminded me of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, thieves don't come in at night. They don't come in when it's dark. The freaks come out at night. The freaks come in when it's dark. And if you hanging out with people that like to do things and their deeds in the dark, you are hanging out with thieves and robbers. I'm just going to tell you right now how it is. Somebody's being blessed because I'm seeing hearts like crazy. So I'm glad because God told me to share this. It cannot, you cannot allow it to pull you out of your character. Let me continue reading because I want to get through this. Verse 9 says, I, Jesus Christ, that pit bull is the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Once you come through this gate and that pit bull is standing at that door, you good. No, no fox is going to come in and destroy you. You shall be saved. And, and you shall go in and out and you're going to find pasture. As long as you got the eyes of that pit bull watching over you, Jesus Christ, I'm not calling Jesus a dog. I'm putting him as a type of protection as this pit bull was for the chicken. That's what I'm doing. I'm not saying Jesus is a dog. You shall go in and out under his care, under his watch, and you're going to find pasture. The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Two things I want to point out. The first thing a thief is going to do is try to get you out of the covering of your leaders. They're going to try to get you out from the covering of your mom, from the covering of your dad, from the covering of your youth pastor, from your covering of your bishop, from the covering of your coaches, from the covering of your friends, your older sisters that care about you. And they're going to say things like they don't know what the heck they're talking about. You can do this better. You already got it figured out. You've grown. You've grown anyways. Why you need their opinion? You've grown. That's the first thing I want to say about that. The second thing I want to say is Jesus is saying under my care, not only are you going to have life, but you're going to have life more abundantly. A lot of people are just settled with life. They settled with life. Like, this is good, I'm living, this is straight. But they don't realize that Jesus don't want you to just have life. He wants you to have it more abundantly. Have it more abundantly. It's crazy. But that's what God wants for you. He wants you to have life and to have it more abundantly. There's so much I can say. But let's finish this passage and then we'll just chat. Verse 11 says... I am come, or I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the shepherd. But he that is a hireling, check this out, guys. Somebody that's just hired to protect the sheep, they're going to run. They're just going to run. 
I hired you. I'm paying you $20 an hour to protect my kids. A babysitter is watching your kids for $20 an hour and you give them $60 for three hours. A robber breaks into the house. The first thing they're going to do is run out. Unless they're just dedicated like Jesus. But the first thing a hireling is going to do, someone that's hired, is they're going to think about themselves first. Because they're not truly the parents of the kid. They're going to run like, oh my gosh. And then afterwards, they're going to say, oh my gosh, I forgot the kids. Not, not the shepherd. Not Jesus. Jesus is going to give his life for you. And Satan don't want you around people that's willing to sacrifice their life for you. He wants to first pull you or bind the strong man and get him out of the way so he can get to you. That's really what it's about. How can I get to you if the pit bull is standing at the door? Imagine Jesus just standing at the door and these people trying to get to you. And Jesus is like, I wish you would, cuz. I wish you would. First thing they got to do is strike the shepherd. Once they strike the shepherd, the sheep scatter. Once the sheep scatter, there's no more safety in numbers. So somebody on this line better pay attention because God has given you warning. Before you sneak that dude in your window or before you sneak out your window, remember this message, okay? Watch film. Study the tape. Know your enemy. And know what's getting ready to come your way. Because the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that isn't hireling, he's hired to take care of the sheep. And is not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not. He sees the wolf and then he runs off and leaves it and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters the sheep. And the hireling flees because he's a hireling and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I'm known by my sheep. As the father knows me, even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I don't need to go any further, y'all. The Bible also says in the Old Testament I have to find the scripture but it says when you catch a thief make the thief pay you back double to the young man that I was talking to yesterday and to the young people whether you see this or not I don't know if you'll ever see this but to the people that's on this line now you know the tactics of the thief now you know his ways now you know what he's all about when you catch the thief, you must make the thief pay you back double. How? You take away his power and you take back what he stole from you. Thieves have no power over you unless you give it to him. And the only way you can give it to him is come out from the covering of the Holy Spirit. Do not leave the sheepfold. You want to make sure that God, his son, Jesus Christ, remains your pit bull that protects you from the foxes and the wolves. God's got you, man. He's got you. But when you catch a thief, make him pay you back double. You guys can catch your thieves. But it starts with you studying yourselves. It starts with you making records of yourselves. Making sure you know that Satan knows you inside out. He's taking record of everything you've ever done. And he knows how to get you off your game. He knows how to pull you out of your spiritual Christian character. That's all I got to say to you today. Guard the ways of your heart. Watch film. That's what I titled it. Watch and film. If you watch film and you study the ways of the adversary, you'll know he's your opponent. This is what great captains and generals do when they're going to war. They study 
the tactics and the strategies of the enemy. That way when they see it, they recognize it and they have a way to counter that. And that's the victory guys, is being able to counter what Satan or your enemy is tossing your way. Is being able to recognize and say, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> Watch this, I got something for you behind. I got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got something for you. You thought you could pull me out of character? Because that's really what he's trying to do. Once he gets you out of character and you make an impulsive decision, you find yourself in jail or dead. And that, my friend, is what Satan's plan is for you. To kill, to steal, and or to destroy. Or all three. I love you guys, man. Let me pray for you and we'll wrap this up. Study the tactics of the enemy. Amen. Powerful message. Yeah, JR. I wanted to be short and sweet because I'm probably going to go ahead and save this one. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your love and your, your blessings. Thank you, Lord, that when this young man called me yesterday, he had no idea what he was doing, but you did. And I thank you for blessing us both. You poured into me for the moment the very words that were necessary and at the same time you gave me a message. Watch film. Go back and watch film. Study the ways of the enemy. Study what he's doing with you. Study how he manipulates your emotions. And Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for the young people that are on here watching this film and learning, Lord, how to go back and watch and see that many times they've allowed foxes and wolves into their sheep fold and have allowed you, Jesus, the pit bull, to stop watching over them. They've come out from under your protection. But Lord, today we come back to you and we ask you to cover us once again. And we thank you for highlighting the ways of the enemy. We have caught the thief and we rebuke the thief in Jesus' name. And everybody that agrees with me has said or will say, Amen and amen. I love you guys. Miss Nadine, is there anything you want to say? You got to scoop on over. Skip on over. Skip on. Hey guys. PD killed that word today, didn't he? Ooh. Ooh. Hey, uh, uh, Go ahead, tell Um, understand your weakness so that you can defeat the enemy. Make sure your pit bull is on guard at all times. Good Love work. you too, KJ. Good Thank work. you, Miss Lady. That's good work. We're going to end it here, guys, because one of the things that I've been wanting to do, uh, I want to say thank God for that young man and for the leading of the Holy Spirit that prompted those people to call me. Um, through that, instantly, I felt led to pray. Uh, they asked for prayer, we prayed. And instantly God started downloading um, gems that we needed to share that would save not only that young man for the moment, but other things that through that attack, Satan was trying to take from this person. Um, remember, that attack from Satan is not just to pull you out of character, it's to cause you to lose everything that God has intended for you. Um, and I know this person, I know the things that God has in store for this person, and I know the things that God has in store for you guys. Uh, yeah, please. Um, greatness is in front of you guys, but you must stay the course. And if you come out, remember, Satan is roaming. Picture it this way, Satan is on a leash. He can't go but 20 feet, okay? He's on a leash, and he can go around that leash 20 feet in diameter. So you got this circle of 20 feet, and Jesus has the rest of the 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 the, uh, the the terrain, the rest of the earth, the rest of it is God and His covering. And when you come out of the covering of God and you step into that 20, that that realm where Satan has, he will destroy you. Do not go where God didn't intend for you to go. Don't try to handle what's not for you. But you must watch film to know when Satan's trying to pull you into the realm of not your world. You can step into his circumference. You can step into his diameter. You can step into his world and get destroyed. And 
So I want to say thank you guys for trusting me enough to call me when you need me. And I want to say thank God for downloading what was necessary for the moment. And thank you, Miss Nadine, for always having my back. That's why he called me late, y'all. I I'm love his, you. I'm his eyes in the dark, y'all. Something like that. Wow. <laughs> We love you guys. Um, pray for us. I just got a text while I was teaching with you guys that tickets are really low, so we might be on our way back to California. Oh, see They that. said, please call me as soon as possible. So I got to run. I love you guys. It's a blessing. Um, you can always call me or text me. We're going to shut down now, uh, and I'll save this, and you can always go back and watch it. You may want to tag somebody with this one and share it with them. Uh, because I believe this message will save lives or keep people out of car crashes or prisons. You know, before you jump into that car or allow that person into your bedroom, remember this word. That's all I can say. Watch film. Yeah. Go Watch back and film. study. Take a moment. Breathe before you make that decision. And watching film just means going back and taking a look at the past and seeing some of the, the victories of the enemy and how come they won and why they won in your life. That's what watching film means. So I love you guys. God bless. Uh, we're going to end this now. Deuce. Peace. Love y'all.